Amen. Glory. I announced to you that I'd be speaking on the topic of ministry of helps this week and next week and perhaps the next. Uh, we'll just see what God does. It's a little bit rough for me as a pastor to uh, talk to you about this subject, especially after we just did the 4th of July uh, fireworks uh, stand out here. We had some awesome involvement and awesome workers uh, to help us. And that's part of ministry of help, but that's not, uh, that is physical labor, and physical labor is part of ministry of helps, but, but there's more than just the physical labor. If you picked up a program back there today, on the front of it, it it's the same as last month but it has the quote uh, on it that says, Will God ever ask you to do something that you are not able to do? Yes, he will ask you to do things that you are not able to do all the time. He will ask you to do that. It must be that way for God's, for to him, for him to get glory for his kingdom. If we function in our own abilities and skills, we get the glory. If we function According to the power of the Spirit in us, God gets the glory. He wants to reveal himself to the world through you and I. That's a pretty awesome statement by Henry uh, Blackaby. In the scripture, in uh, reference to uh, helps in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, it says, uh, these in the church. First, there's apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Then, gifts of healing helps, administration, variety of tongues. I, if you were here on a Tuesday night when Pastor Ron spoke uh, to us on Tuesday night, he probably, a lot of what I share with you is a repeat of that. And it may be repeated again next Sunday some people say now that's another topic but it's listed here in the scripture the word helps to ministry everybody wants to be a leader everyone wants to call the shots But God, not yet, but God doesn't want everybody to be a leader or a teacher. You got that? God does not want every one of you to be a leader or a teacher. Yeah, I saw David says, whew. 
Yeah. But some of you are saying, oh, I wanted that position. James chapter 3 verse 1 says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers. It's in the scripture. Not many of you become teachers. Some of you are gifted, skilled teachers. Those are the people who should be the teachers in the body of Christ. But in the church, in the body of Christ, we need arms, legs, hands, feet, fingers. I was thinking this morning, I was came in the church, and the, you remember last week we had the flag stuck right here, and it was tape. And I removed it, the tape had left a white residue right here and here and over there. And it was stuck. I rubbed it. It wouldn't come off. I went in and got some spray and a paper towel, squirted it and rubbed it. It wouldn't come off. I took my thumbnail God gave some of you thumbnails to be used for his kingdom. Yeah. God uses every part of the body. I'm talking about individuals. Every part of the physical body. God gave us to use for a reason. God gave you as individual characters and personalities. Uh, if everyone becomes a leader, then there is no, uh, it becomes lawless. Lawlessness exists. That's what happened in the book of Judges. Next says, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. That means they did what I wanted to do. Yeah? And it brought chaos. And really, that's what's happened in many churches across America. People... Um, come to church thinking the church is like the mall. Yeah. They know that you don't worship God in the mall, but really people are expecting the same service from the church like the mall. And I'm one of the worst about that. I go shopping at the mall, and I go in a store, and they're not friendly. They're stuck up, rude. I don't get service from them. I'm not going back to that store again. Too bad you didn't get my business anymore. And I go to somewhere else. People in the world and in the church have that same mind about the church. Yeah. I'm going over there to Norwalk, that uh, CCC. I'm going to try them out and just see if they're friendly. pastor doesn't shake my hand, there's another church right down the road. I'm going over there. 
That's the mentality we have today about churches. But let me tell you something. <laughs> the church is not a business. And the concept of servanthood and faithfulness and sacrifice and dependability seems to have vanished from the church. Therefore, when people come in and they don't get that mall service, they go somewhere else. Yeah. Um, what I'm trying to say is we have to provide that Yes, but at the same time, huh? Oh, she says, we have to provide something better than mall service. Whoa. That's good. Uh, trying to preach for me, she says, the church here is not selling clothes. We're selling Jesus. Yeah. What is so desperately needed in the church is Christian ministries Christian people who will dedicate themselves to the ministry of helps. Listed in that list we looked at just up here, helps was listed there. The Greek word translated helps means to lay hold of so as to support to support grab hold on and support and that's where the church has its problems right now ministry of helps is someone who commits themselves to a ministry so as to support, assist in any way they can. We had a person show up here a few months ago, or it hasn't been a year. It hadn't even been a year yet. And the person told me, I want to do anything you want or tell me. We had somebody else show up after that that said, I'll, wherever you need me, I'll be involved. Well, let me tell you something. I've heard that story so many times. And they lasted about some a month, some lasted one year, some lasted one week. But hey, let me talk about successful churches and successful ministries. All of you know about a man named Billy Graham, right? I think he's 95 this year. I recently saw a picture of him. I would call his ministry a success, right? Yeah, for sure. Let me explain why his ministry was such an enormous success. It was because of his 
dedicated team of people he had who worked with him. Billy Graham had men and women working with him from 1950 to the years 2000 until they died. Men like George Beverly Shea. Among hearing people, that name is famous. We hear that name and we know instantly, oh, that man can sing phenomenally. Wow. George Beverly Shea was with Billy Graham since 1950s all the way through supporting that ministry. Because of his su support to that ministry of Billy Graham, he helped make Billy Graham's ministry a success. Plus, he profited, as far as finances go, I'm sure millions from his recordings. The other man who was assisted, Billy Graham, is uh, Cliff Bowers. Another name that's known among hearing people and ministry is phenomenal in his teachings. An awesome teacher. He was with him from 1950s to the end. And then we look in the Word of God and I ask, how many years was Joshua and Aaron with Moses? We look at Moses, all oh, so such a success. But it was because he and Billy Graham had ministry of helps with them. And they were not, well, I'm going to join that ministry and later I'll, I'll develop and I'll become independent on my own and become a leader. That was not their goal. Their goal was to be supportive of that ministry all their lives. In the process of helping those ministries, they themselves became successful. You see, when you commit yourself to the ministry of helps, you lay hold of a personal success that you might never achieve without it. I believe that every member, every person, I should say, seated in this church or any other ministry is called to the ministry of helps. God has put you in this church to help this ministry. not to just become fat. You are not called to be a consumer, but you are called to be a servant. A consumer gets and receives. A servant does what? What does a servant do, church? It gives and serves and helps. We, are, we as a church, we are supposed to be the um, clerk behind the counter, serving people, stocking the shelves, not over here as 
the impatient hurry up. But we're supposed to be behind the counter with a smile for those disgusting, I mean, those wonderful church people. Yeah, that's the ministry of helps. The job of ministry of helps is to free the hands of the leaders to do the work God's called us to do. In the book of Acts chapter 6, we read uh, that a uh, controversy had sprung up in the early church. That controversy uh, was uh, this about the daily ministry of the church, how to feed the women, widows. And it was brought up, and in the scripture it tells us in Acts, it is not desirable, next, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore seek out among Seek out among you seven men full of Holy Spirit and wisdom whom you may appoint over the business, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and ministry of the word. We as pastors, if I tell you that, um, Perhaps I'd be criticized somewhat and say I'm here to meet meet the needs of the people. No, you are here to meet the needs of the people. You are the ministry of helps to meet the needs of the people. When there's a death in the family, you are the ones who should know about it and go and minister to the people. Oh, no, 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 no. That's the pastor's job. When there's a birth in the family, you should be the ones who go and visit at the hospital. Oh, no, no, no. That's the pastor's job. When someone gets sick or goes in the hospital for surgery, you as individuals should be the ones who go. That's what this scripture is saying. Yeah? That's the ministry of helps. Well, you know, that just doesn't work in a 20th century church that was long ago during the Bible times but today that will not work I almost have to agree Uh, but if we follow the principles and the rules set up right here maybe we would see the results like the church in Jerusalem that grew and exploded. Yeah. And perhaps the reason we've not yet seen the growth in this church is because some of us have not accepted that ministry of helps responsibility understand I know some of you have don't misunderstand me I'm not scolding you as a church today no 
but I'm informing you as a church because I want to see us become a church like the church in Jerusalem, which grew. And the reason it grew is because the people got involved in ministry of helps. They got involved in the mundane, weekly jobs of the church. Somebody is called to do the mundane jobs in the church. Now, what are some of the boring jobs in the church? Says filing paperwork. Hey, we have somebody in the church who comes in on Mondays and does all that for me now. I hate filing pa papers. I just, I have a box over there in the office. I have to save this, copy of the bill, copy of a check or whatever. Finally, I asked, or someone asked me, you have a job I can do. Yes! Come to the office and file for me. They do that once a week, and now it's just that much to file. So I've added to that person's responsibility. <laughs> Some more. Other boring jobs is to come to church early and the marker boards, put them in the pew. The other mundane job is to pick those up after church. And I have to say thank you that that mundane job is one of our kids' jobs. Mariah does that every Sunday. She picks them up and puts them in the bag. And I have a new bag. I just forgot to bring it. Uh, that job. Oh, good. That's a kid's job. The other mundane job is to arrive early to do that job of putting them out. To check the pews. Make sure the offering, there's three and three envelopes. There should be three and three and three and three and three. Offering envelopes. And sometimes um, the other church in the afternoon, they take our offering envelopes and ride on them and then put them back in. I know it's not you people that do that. You wouldn't do that. So uh, it's the other church that meets in the afternoon. They take our offering envelope and scribble on it, especially where... Uh, uh, well, okay. Some things you have to have sensor, and it has to have a beep in it. Uh, yeah, those envelopes, putting those in, and picking up the garbage that the other church the gum wrappers and the candy bar wrappers and the nap, yellow, that other church using our yellow napkins. Oh, the yellow napkins are stuffed in those. Those are the mundane jobs. Ministry of helps that God has called you, somebody, to do. But instead, I as a pastor have done it. Oh, I didn't know. Well, now you know. Next week, I'll have a list for you. Do what? Oh, well, the other mundane job that my wife doesn't do is our plants outside out there that keep the property looking beautiful 
They don't have sprinklers in them. They have to be watered. And as I stand, I do that job. Stand there and water them. I'm praying for you. Lord, give this job to somebody else. No. I think I'll start praying that. But that's every two days I water them out here. It makes the property look good, much better to me. But, oh, we didn't have that before. Okay, anyway. But I also know that I, as a pastor, have been robbing your ministry from you. Because I've been doing, doing, doing and you've not been getting blessings to do. And you're not able to fulfill your ministry of helps because I do it. That's changing. And I'm thankful for the person who comes on Tuesday and cleans up over in the chapel and the fellowship hall for us volunteers because on Wednesday night there's other churches using those buildings and they have to be cleaned from Sunday. Sunday there's three or four different churches using the building over there and it has to be cleaned and ready for Wednesday night and then it has to be cleaned again for Sunday. That's our regular janitorial person does that job thank you for your ministry of helps I may do it all pastor you see the problem is the person who volunteers but then is missing is worse than no help at all. The church is better off for the pastor to go ahead and do it if the person says, I'll do it, and they do it one time waste my training time and then don't show up anymore. Well, I have to get up too early on Sunday morning. Hey, Ministry of Help. Ministry of Help, there's no room for I was not in the mood. I was not in the mood. I told my wife I was not in the mood to clean house yesterday. I did it anyway. I did it. I vacuumed anyway. At our house outside, there's yellow flowers that fall from the trees. The sidewalk is filled. You walk on it, I bet I might have one in my shoe, do I? No, they're clean already. I picked one up over there earlier. My house. Yellow spotted floor. So I had to that. You see, there's things in the church that have to be done. Doesn't matter if you're in the mood or not. Or, oh, I forgot to show up. How many of you have smartphones? Some liars here. How many of you have phones with uh, alarms? Wait, wait, just a second. Some people not looking, they're talking. 
But do you have an alarm on it? On your phone? Oh, yes! Almost all cell phones have an alarm on it. There's no reason. I forgot. That is no excuse for me as a pastor and it's surely no excuse for God. This is your ministry and you will not prosper unless you are faithful in the little things that he's called you to do. I'm thankful for the last minute volunteer on the sound back there. I don't know if Miguel has ever touched a soundboard before in his life, but he did a pretty good job today. Awesome. Here's what the Bible says. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. You see, if you're doing the little things here in the church, you're faithful in so much. Therefore, if you've not been faithful, righteous, la, 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 and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? That has a lot in it. Sermon in itself. My point is you have to be faithful in the small things if you want bigger responsibility. It's faithfulness in the mundane things. Uh, I'm, I'm giving you a few things today of what are mundane things. It's Sunday morning getting out here in the parking lot before the other churches arrive. You know what the time the first church service starts on this property? What time? Is it? Sunday morning. The first church service starts at what time? 7 a.m. 7 a.m. The people start arriving around 6.15 a.m. The parking lot, we have guests who use it on Saturday night. You need to pick up the underwear. You need to pick up the beer cans. You need to pick up the whiskey bottles. You need to pick up the McDonald's that you threw down out there last Tuesday night. To make it presentable to the kingdom of God. I don't like going in places of business where there's trash laying all around on the ground. I like a clean parking lot. Uh, the pew help, we talked about that. Uh, I think the ministry of helps is the greatest reason why the church does not grow today. Not just this church, but all churches. If the people did what God calls you to do, the church would explode. I see what else I have. Go on, next slide. Next. Here it is. The immature. The immature come to church to 
get ministered to. The mature come to church to minister. Yeah. Next. For those who serve well as deacons, obtain themselves good standing. I don't have enough time. We are not as successful like God wants us because we're not involved in ministry of helps. Get ready. Next week, I'm going to give you on a card with Ministry of Helps. Of course we have teaching jobs, but it's the other areas which hurt this church and block its growth. From greeters at the door, yeah. Would you stand? God, today we have considered ministry of helps and Lord this week I'm asking Holy Spirit to come and just get in their ear get in their eyeballs with the sign language and remind them about ministry of helps I'm asking each person here this week to begin to ask God, Lord, what is it you want me to do in this church that would help us reach this community? I'm not talking about going out door to door. I'm talking about the things here. We had guests today I think they might not feel comfortable here. They've been here before. Lord, what can I do to help people feel comfortable in your house and be able to minister to them? Ask the Lord this week. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. Ron, would you come help me today? We're just going to stand in the front. Yeah. Would you come and take communion? You do not have to be a member of this church. Would you just rise and come? Take it and go back to your seats. Throw that away. Uh, you're fine. You're fine. You can't go back there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you are a mighty God. Good job, Warren.